Guys, greetings and salutations. What is good? It is your host with the most, Paul Plan 2, reminding you that Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. And today, I am planting a ton of native succulents and other amazing species of native plants to bring wildlife, pollinators, and potentially some food into the garden as well. So without further ado, it's time to get to planting obviously smash like button before this video gets started it is the best way to help me out and speaking of helping me out one thing that is not helping me aesthetically is driving home and seeing all these plants on the side of my house so a lot of these i did purchase a while ago aka probably like six to eight months ago and i never threw them in the ground but now it is time to tackle this mess and really start to make over my garden. All right guys, so we are on the hell strip area of my yard and the first plant I'm throwing in is this giant agave. Now this dude will get huge, so I want it to be a statement pretty much in the front of my garden bed. I have a corner lot, so when people walk by, I want them to just be blown away by how huge a plant can grow. Why ain't no way, boy? And this dude actually is pupped all the way out, so I not only have one, but two <laughs> giant agaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant the other one elsewhere and uh, really make these ginormous statements. Okay, so by ginormous statement, I mean this plant can grow up to six feet tall. And then oh when it God. does flower after about 10 years in a desert environment, the stalk can be 25 feet tall. Now, because it does rain a lot in Houston, this guy will grow faster than in a normal dry climate but yeah this dude is gonna get huge and i just want it to be stunning for anyone walking by my garden now in the front bed i'm gonna plant a little small one so it will get huge by this pine tree it is very very dry in this area and that's why i want something that'll get ginormous and doesn't need a lot of water to really be a standout in the front yard. Now, as I plant this giant agave, keep in mind they grow in zones eight through 10. They prefer full sun, but can take some light shade. All right, so there it is. Look at this, this guy is tiny. I'm gonna be curious to see at the end of the season how big it'll be. And I also wanna dig up this like little oak tree because it has no business being here. All right, so the next plant I'm throwing in is this stalked bull bine or bull bean. I don't even know. Now I'm big on native plants, but my lady hasn't quite drank the Kool-Aid yet, if you will. So she really liked this plant and I just wanna get her more into plants in general so then I can start transitioning her into the native plants. Cause it's very hard when someone goes to a garden center, they're like, oh, that's cool. And then I'm like, nah, we can't get that. It's not, you know what I mean? I don't wanna be that person and like shit on her dreams when she's showing interest in some plants at least. So I'm gonna put this guy in underneath the pine tree. Again, it is very drought acclimated, which is perfect because this pine tree sucks up all that water in the area. So this bull bean, like I said, is not native to the US. It is native to tropical Africa. It can grow in zones nine to 11 and it is drought tolerant and it'll form almost a ground cover like clump that can extend to be about four feet. It attracts carpenter and honeybees. So I am curious to see how big this dude will get, but the flowers are absolutely stunning. Gorgeous. So yeah, my lady made a great selection. All right, so we have the bull bean in the ground and in front of it, I'm throwing in three Mystic Spires salvias. They're across, but bees love these things. I already have some in my yard, but look at that. There's one, there's two, there's three, and they'll light up with blue to contrast that orange yellow. Hello, these are great. So basically, Mystic Spires is a cross between the Salvia Farinaceae and Salvia Longa Pictata, Spictata, something like that. Either way, man, they were a chance discovery at a botanical garden where the parents mated and created this wonderful free buffet for pollinators. These guys get huge. They prefer full sun, but they have already thrived in my yard, so I know that these will continue to go hard. Now I planted a couple more on the side of my house in the garden beds and these do grow in zone seven through 10. So a lot of you guys are able to plant these dudes and trust me, you won't be disappointed. All right, y'all. So we have moved back to the side area of my garden. And again, we are underneath a pine tree, which means this area is drier. Now in this area, we have all this like catch weed, like bed straw sh growing in, which Evidently, you can use to clear out your system, I guess. But anyways, I'm just leaving it as a ground cover. It is native and it will keep that soil nice and enriched. And it's nice to have some roots actually going in this area. But because normally in the summer it is hella dry, I'm throwing in this Peruvian 
apple cactus. Now I'm not sure if this will be able to survive a freeze, but I wanna give it a try. It was super cheap at a local nursery. And so I'm gonna throw this dude in in this area. Hopefully it does grow really tall, really vigorously, and uh, can produce a little bit of a D blaze for your boy. All right, so as I put this Peruvian apple cactus in the ground and started doing more research, I figured this dude would probably die on the side of my house because it has been freezing every other year in Houston and this dude is not frost hardy whatsoever but I'm so tempted by the fruits that I rolled the dice on it I got it for cheap at a local nursery in the country so I just figured hey I'll chunk it in the ground who knows I might have buyer's remorse and indecision and actually end up putting this dude in a pot we shall see but yeah man i just really want to try the fruit so hopefully this year it takes off flowers and i can get some nice edible apple cactus so just look at how glorious this looks man i don't know it's such a nice looking plant i think i'm gonna dig it up <laughs> no lie okay guys so it is yet another day and we are still continuing this journey and yes man i had to throw on the frog shirt once again it is a good omen of luck and the three plants we're throwing in now all are native species now when i shop for native plants in houston texas i do go to buchanan's and i have three plants that are absolutely amazing for pollinators we have the twisted leaf goldenrod and goldenrods are basically keystone species that basically feed and provide more beneficial nectar and food for insects than a ton of other plants combined and hence why i'm throwing them in the garden they do seed readily and they can spread and usually they don't have that clean look that people necessarily would like and they get tall so i'm going to put them along the border of the fence in the taller areas as a backdrop in the garden but once passers-by see the amount of pollinators on these plants i think they will change their mind and hence is the reason why i'm throwing in some different species that you can't get at home depot and that no one else will basically have in their gardens with that being said we're throwing in the golden rods first and foremost i have two different varieties i have the seaside and the twisted leaf so let's go ahead and get them in right along the fence line so even though these plants don't look like much in their current form they can get up to four feet tall which is absolutely astronomically amazing um and they do attract and bring in a ton of beneficial pollinators they like full sun and grow from virginia all the way down to tejas all right now next up i'm throwing in this joe pie weed and i think i'm gonna throw it in this corner of the yard right here so it can grow tall along the fence and look absolutely um, spontaneously pontificant. What? Dude, I am dumb, I promise you. But yeah, I had to move the location of this Joe pie weed next to my pine tree because there's more room for it to grow. It gets up to seven, seven. feet tall and it likes both moist and dry soil and these are a pollinators crack house in heaven they grow in zones four through eight and actually stop in louisiana but i figured i would try this guy in houston as well to bring in the bees and butterflies you dig okay so last is certainly not least the next plant we're throwing in is this agave i don't know the exact species but i got this at this random nursery in the country so hopefully it does do well and thrive a little pup is already popping up so uh, i'm gonna replace this prickly pear cactus that i had in the ground that died during the freeze i guess it really wasn't acclimated to this environment with this bad boy right here and hopefully he takes off and once again it is right underneath the dry area of the pine tree so let's get her in all right so i hope you guys can sniff my drift catch my drift however the saying goes i hope you guys have gotten an overall view of what the methodology of this video has been and that's to put cold hardy dry soil loving moisture level plants in the ground that will last up to 15 degrees and these american species of agave definitely do qualify this one looks cool and it already has a pup so that means i got two plants for the price of one Jackpot. and all right class that is a wrap on another video once again always remember earth is my planet earth is my planet i hope you guys did derive at least a little bit of inspiration on some hardy plants that can survive in my houston texas zone nine climate i mean we threw in things for pollinators we threw in things that require pretty much no regular water upkeep or maintenance and of course plants that survive the heat and the cold snaps that we do get down 
here. Now, if you guys have any comments, any suggestions, any advice, I am all ears and I am here for it. So definitely comment in that comment section down below. And the best thing you guys can do to support this channel, which is still relatively young, is to smash that like button. That is the best, most free, amazing way to help your boy out if you do support or find any enjoyment in these videos whatsoever. But until next time, man, I will see y'all soon. And uh, yeah, miss me a little while I'm gone. Peace. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life, I roost And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get